Let's, uh... Oh, this is a box for all, isn't it? <laughs> Let's go through the car boot sale hall. There's, uh... Usually you go to a car boot sale and it's full of old tat and you don't often find worthwhile computer bits. But this time was a rare occasion. And I've come away with this enormous box. So I'm just going to empty it piece by piece, I think. So first thing, simple audio cable. I always collect a, a cable or two when I go somewhere because it's nice not to come away empty handed. So just a triple cable, another one of those. This one's a bit curious. Video in and video out, but no, no sound connection. I don't know if that's for a CCTV monitor. Power cables, one of those figure of eight cables, but grey. So I thought I'll have that. It says HP print on it. But the printer isn't there. <laughs> Another curious SCART lead, very long and seemingly just audio this time. Find out what that will offer. Something I'm always looking for, multi-plugs. Mm -hmm. So if you yeah. plug in a Commodore or something like that, you need the monitor, the computer, the printer, maybe a disk drive as well. And there's never enough plugs. But they don't seem to sell those anymore. And mm -hmm. yep. for those plugs that are behind a piece of furniture. So I thought that would be useful. But then, unusually, something Commodore. Do, 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 do. A book. And a game. The Diary of Adrian Mole, aged 13 and 3 quarters. With the accompanying book, where the title is completely faded, but it still says Commodore down here. So I didn't know they did a Commodore version of that. That's rather interesting. Few extra games. The very first with the Christmas demo on it. Super Robin Hood. Super Blitz. And I've tried these two. These two are working fine. This uh, works with a good tape deck. Sadly, this one's not working at all. So we've got that. Hmm. 50 games. So far, I haven't got this to load. There's a great long list of games there. So I'll keep trying that. It may decide to work in the end. Do you want to zoom out a bit? Close to one side. And power supply. And I did ask the guy, what happened to the computer? And he said, no idea. Disappeared many years ago. <laughs> so a spare power supply. More cables. Audio-visual cables. Actually, audio cables. But this one's interesting. It's got those DIN connectors. You can see one there. Just on the top. Mm -hmm. So that's quite useful. I've got one or two things that use that. Another power cable. I didn't know Belkin sold these cables. Just one of the typical kettle lead. Mm -hmm. yeah, all useful stuff. A simple heater for the caravan. That's fine. We'll ignore that. And then we get to the interesting bits. Random piece of paper. I found some software and some digital adapters and I'm really quite amazed by this. And the guy was calling out from his van, 50p, everything 50p, if you see it, it's 50p. <laughs> so I went through this box, some people have taken some bits out already, so I haven't got everything. And he said, the more you get, the cheaper it is. So I picked up the whole box and said, well, how much for all of that? And he said, three pounds. Three pounds. 
If I start this side, we've just got the boring old adapters. ISDN. So I think that's the days when people were going from phone line connections to digital connections. So it seems to have the adapter in there. plugs to that must have gone to a card so the card is missing I have to look at that online or something but we've got the drivers I we'll have to see if the rest of that's available anywhere so that's the first bit not terribly useful toner tuner a toner and ink saving printing utility for use with Macintosh computers. So this is the days when printers had toners. 1993. And still sealed up in its plastic. So, oh, curiosity. This I think is another curiosity. Just what that says under there. If you have a hard disk crash, the one event that could bring your work to a grinding halt. Unless you backed up with Retrospect. And this is also a Macintosh program. Macintosh Plus with a hard drive and System 6 or later. Well, I've never had a Macintosh that old, so I'm, I'm curious about these things. But everything seems to be here. The book, license agreements, looks nice and clean. But one day I will get a Macintosh. This is getting very bright. What, what's happening here? Oh, you're on an auto exposure, eh? Be fine. Retrospect extras. Mm -hmm. Might get some pieces. There are some other Macintosh bits that we saw, including some beige Apple branded speakers, but uh, that was on a different stool, and the guy was asking a little bit much. So we'd run out of money by that point. So, something else Apple. CD-ROM for Macintosh as well. <laughs> Doo -doo. Welcome to the magical word machine. I'll send that down to him. Oh. <laughs> no one probably be into that. Well, they haven't got a Macintosh. This needs operating system 7.0. So we're going back away with that one as well. Another simple adapter. A local area network. This one that way. Can't get into this one. Ends and push it through. Yeah, that's the way to do it. Doo -doo -doo. So it's one of these a PCMCIA card. There's some kind of adapter that might work with the other component. Some drivers and a cable, another similar cable there. What's the other end of it? Telephone connection. Hmm. A telephone, looks like a coupler rather than an adapter. And the drivers, disc one, disc two. 
I assume that's under there. How useful these things are in this day and age. I really have no idea. Once we're done with the boring stuff, we get on to the interesting things. And some of these are gone already, so I missed out on some things like Excel, I think. But Microsoft Publisher. Windows, what version is this? Windows compatible. What version is that one? I really don't know. Requires MS DOS operating system version 3.1 or later, and Windows version 3.1 or later. So that looks a bit of fun. We'll get that working on the Windows, the DOS machine. A big heavy box. FileMaker Pro, number one database manager. Don't know what promotional copy means. Again, for Macintosh. They're into the world of Macintosh here. copy not for resale install British examples British install British 2 and utilities <laughs> so that's going to be interesting the user guide for Macintosh This one's still sealed up. Look at that. Getting started. The Pro User's Guide. And is that the same as this book? Is that a spare book? I think it is. We obviously left one copy to keep pristine and one for use with a demonstration. I'm intrigued by that. For a Macintosh Plus, a classic, an SE, an LC, portable PowerBook Quadra, or two. Macintosh LC2 family or later. God, they did have a lot of computers in their range. Requires one megabyte of memory and system seven, four megabytes recommended. Apple system software six or later, seven recommended for certain features. That's going back away. Fax Pro 4.0, which someone sold second hand for 75p. Manage, manage faxes in Windows. The best way to send and receive and manage faxes in Windows. <laughs> <laughs> Who sends faxes anymore? Somebody must. Oh, the flap. The best fax package there is. Highlights. 
The most supported fax modems in Windows. There's a whole range there. Scion, good to see them. There we go, there's some discs. One, two, three, four, five. So I hope there's five required. Various user agreements. Valuable information. Setup guide, a user's guide. Turn them all around. Cover your facts. What does that mean? That's going to be something to explore a little history. drew me to this box was this. AutoCAD Lite for Windows 95. I thought that's astonishing. It says upgrade on the top. And I've already managed to find a, a version of window of AutoCAD Lite. Version one on five and a quarter inch floppies. And so I hope there's the CD. A backup version by the looks of it. I'm hoping this will be an upgrade from that, which would mean I could install this. Installation instructions for Windows 95 or Windows NT 4, 4.0. Hey, look at this. Oh, look at this. Oh, you know what this is? <laughs> That's one of those inserts for a CalComp uh, digitizer. I have to get hold of one of those now. Oh, absolutely amazing. Have you got that? Mm -hmm. Got some close ups on that. Copyright 1996. What an amazing thing to find there. The license agreement. Does anybody read all of that? And the user guide. Look at this. That's a big book, isn't it? Using drawing tools. So you start with a drawing. Or it's got equivalents of drawings. Drawing tools. Well, that is going to be fascinating. And I really hope I can get this installed on something. April the 16th, 1996. Oh, in memory of Gregory Ivan Small. Who's he? So copyright 1993 and 1995-6. So this must be version 2. And I've got the 1993 version already installed. So I'm hoping, being an upgrade, I can install this. Organising your projects, drawing geometry. <laughs> that is quite a book. Imagine that for a licence agreement. <laughs> Enormous. I think the point.
some special instructions for installing on Windows NT 4.0. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's very good. I'm really quite excited about this package. This is release number three. So whether there was one between the one I've got and this. To install under Windows NT 3.51. <clears throat> so that is going to be interesting. I'm looking forward to that. So the whole reason I picked up that that. Uh, That box of software was purely for this. That's what I wanted to see. Right, carry on, there's another big box. There is. Let's so separate that. from that, there was one guy selling some things relatively expensively. So where all of that cost me three pounds, this cost 10. And I'm really interested to see this. I'm better coming in, actually. Are you? Yeah. Let's see if you can read that. Yeah, I can read that. SCO Xenix, or Xenix, operating mm -hmm. system. Version 2.3.4 for a 386 GT processor. Which means this is a really interesting piece of software. Oh. Let's have a look, see what's inside. <laughs> So system requirements, any 386 or 486 computer based on industry standard architecture, ISA, right. or extended ISA, or micro channel architecture, don't know what that is, requires one megabyte of RAM and 20 megabytes of disk space. <laughs> 20 megabytes. <laughs> I really am excited to see this. We have some software. We have a read this first. And then if I pull the books out one by one, tell me if you're getting shine off the lamp above. Operating system reference. Installation and system administrator's guide. A tutorial and user guide. International Supplement Guide. Now this has got plastic on, so see if that's shining. Yeah, it's all right. And also sealed up. These two are sealed up. Release notes. <laughs> You're quite zoomed in there. So okay. I'd never heard of this before, but I had heard of Xenix, which is the operating system developed by Microsoft before they moved on to DOS and then on to Windows. Yeah, right. Uh -huh. And by the time they moved on to DOS and then into Windows, they'd lost interest in this and passed all the rights over to um, Santa Cruz Operations, who then developed this into a, an operating system for the 386 processor. And so I did a little reading on Wikipedia and it this claims to be the first operating system for the 32-bit architecture Which makes this really quite exciting and it looks complete So we've got an activation card, which I'm not going to show because I'll have a number on it License agreement Product registration still here 
a road map for installation. A forum on CompuServe. A software diskette package. I think there's two of those. And this Operating System International Supplement Media. What does that mean? Volume 1. Should there be another one? This one hasn't even been opened. So I shall save that for another day. Maybe that's Volume 2. So I think that is an absolutely incredible find and I'm really looking forward to trying this. And the box of discs. We have a disc volume N1. Seems to be an insulation disc. N2. B1, Basic Utilities, X1, Extended Utilities, X2, X3, and X4. And I really know nothing about what that is. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. What I have read is this can be extremely difficult to load onto a computer and to get it up and running and even more difficult on an emulator. That's the comments I've seen online so far. But as this looks all so complete, I'm fingers crossed for a, a very straightforward installation. But look at this for a reference manual. Look at it, huge. You don't get that with operating systems today. How many pages is that got? Do you know? It doesn't say. Because it's numbered in a curious way. Yeah, yeah. It's numbered in chapter yeah, yeah. sections. Twenty yeah. eighth of March nineteen ninety one. Alright. like a checklist. Well that's going to take you a little while to go through. <laughs> it really is. An 8287, what's that? 387. So this is the reference guide. This is going to be all the, the meanings of all the instructions that you can program in. So I picked up a few operating systems but I never thought I'd find one of these. A tutorial and user guide. Introduction, basic concepts, logging in, working with files and directories. So my understanding is Xenix is developed from Unix under license. And Unix was considered the multi-user operating system, where DOS was considered to be the single user operating system. And so this was considered to be the more high-end professional package. So, usually at a car boot sale you find a load of old tat. Today, I found this. <laughs> Unbelievable. 